Shalom. Foremost, I want to start out by giving all praise to Yahweh, Bashim Yosha, Bashim Rakakadash, double honors to the elders and apostles for their advocation and knowledge, and to Wadi Al Bashim Yosha for putting in the spirit of elders and apostles who become edified regarding this truth and knowledge. Kahalia Yahya Bashim Yosha, Bashim Rakakadash, give all praise to Yahweh, Bashim Yosha, Bashim Rakakadash. Ezekiel 3 and 7, start there. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impotent and hard-hearted. And basically, impotent is um, impotent is um, basically a, a lack of respect, insolent, brazen, disrespectful. That's the nation of Israel, man. As far as hearkening heed to the Lord through the prophets, Ezekiel, as Ezekiel's prophesizing and preaching to him to hearkening heed back coming back to the statue and commandments but because the nation of Israel they have a hearkening heat they are rebellious stiff necked gainsaying people man so they so the prophets caught hell from them when they try to um, make them come back man they really when they're not listening to uh, to the prophets they're, not, they're really dis they're really not respecting the Lord Yahweh because the spirit goes the spirit of Yahweh Shemeshah goes into the prophets the preachers of to the prophets so the prophets can preach to the, uh, the nation of Israel man to hearken to he come back and do what they supposed to do man so basically the um, they're the spiritual spokesmen and, and, uh, spokesmen of Yahweh Bashem Yashah man let's read that again but the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee for they will not hearken unto me which is pretty much Yahweh Bashem Yashah man for all the house are impudent and hard hearted so they hard-hearted, man. They're stubborn and stiff-necked, man. And rebellious, man. Let's go to um, Zechariah 13 and 8. Zechariah 13, 8 and 9. And it shall come to pass that in all the land saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. So two third part will be cut off and die, man. But the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver as refined and will try them as gold is tried they shall call on my name and I will hear will hear them and I will say it is my people and they shall say that the Lord Yahweh is my God man. so the third so two thirds going to be two thirds are going to be cut off one third are going to go through the spiritual in fires and trials of adversity man. They gonna be refined, just like um, getting getting that dross, getting that that scum, getting that um, debris off of them, man. Which, in a matter of speaking, is that sin and those impurities out of them, so they can be refined as gold, man. So they can be repurified, man. And that'll be the one third part. The two thirds gonna be cut off. For more perish than there's gonna more there's gonna be more that perish than be saved, man. So, um, so a greater of the nation of Israel is going to perish and be saved. And, and that one third is that remnant, ultimately. Let's go to, um, let's go to, um, Second Ezra's 9. Go to Second Ezra's real quick. Second Ezra's 9. Second Ezra 9, um, 9. Then shall they be in a pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torment. That's the consequences, man. They cast it away. They, they have a hearkening heed. They dismissed it. So they despised it, man. 
and they're going to be in a pitiful case, man, relating to pretty much uh, the outcome regarding the consequences for doing that, man. Number 10, for such as in their life have received the benefits and have not known me. So they receive things in this world not have not known the Lord or acknowledged the Lord. 10, 11, and they, and they that have loathed my law, this law is what, the statute and commandments, while they yet had liberty. The liberty, this is the great spirit of liberty, man. And when as yet a place of, of repentance, repentance was open unto them, understood not but despised it. Instead of taking heed, coming back and doing what they can do, they dismissed it, man. They despised it, man. So they pretty much brushed it aside, man. They didn't take it seriously, man. And the consequence is the same must know it after death by pain, man. That's going to be their consequence. Let the faithful on die in their faithfulness. A wave is greater than a drop. You know, so they're going to they're going to suffer the fate of um, knowing it by death by pain, man. Now read 13. And therefore, be not thou curious. Be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished, which is the wicked. But inquire how the righteous shall be saved who the world is and whom the world is created because the world is created ultimately for the righteous so not be concerned about the ungodly man the ungodly will get they'll get what they'll get man. let's go to um let's go to second uh, Ezra 15 and 3 and 4 Fear not the imagination against thee, and let not the incredulity of thee trouble thee. That speak against thee. That's related to the two thirds, man. Their disbelief, their mocking, their scuffing. Second Peter's three, three, four. Um, in the latter days, they'll see, uh, seek after their lusts. Where's the promise? Uh, where the where's the promise of um, of his coming? I guess the fathers have sleep and things continue as normal, man. So basically. They, they, they mocking the, these things that pretty much they're dismissing that these things will come to pass, man. They don't believe it, man. Four. For all the unfaithful shall do what? Die in their unfaithfulness. So the consequence, they're going to know it by death by pain, man. Mm -hmm. Go to... Um, Go to Zeke, Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. This is not a priority for two thirds to come back because they're seeking after other things of the world. You know, this is not a high priority to come back to. Until stuff hits the fan, then they're going to jump try to jump on you know the bandwagon and see what they can do man but while there's there's liberty like this and grace period like this they're not going to seek these things because it's not a high priority for them to do it man in their mind let's go to 8 and 11 because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully dis set is fully set in them to do evil. So they're going to continue to do evil. Because judgment is not, you know, expedient. It's not going to happen right away. They say um, they're going to take advantage of continuing to do their works, man. Their evil, fruitful deeds, man. Their works, man. They're going to continue on because they think nothing's going to happen, man. But everything has its time and season relating to um, the purpose of its time and season relating to Ecclesiastes. Um, three, man, third chapter, man. Because it's not going to happen right away doesn't mean it's not going to happen at all. It's just going to happen in a time it's set for it to happen. So they underestimate certain things because they think nothing's going to happen to them. They think they can get away with it or continue to do it. So they're going to be set forth to continue to do their, their deeds, man. Let's go to... Um, 
because the Lord timetable is different than ours, man. You know. Go to um, Ecclesiastes, uh, I mean, 2nd Ezra 7, 17, 19, 2nd Ezra 7. Second Ezra 7, 17. Then answer I and said, O Lord, that bearest rule, thou hast ordained in thy law, that the righteous shall inherit these things, but the ungodly shall perish. So the, the righteous is going to inherit, man, but the ungodly is going to perish. Their, their, their fate is, is uh, punishment and judgment, judgment and punishment, man. Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things. Straight things relates to very difficult. And the hope for why? For they that have done wickedly have suffered the straight things. And yet shall not see the wide. And the wide is basically um, the promises, man, ultimately, man. But they have to go through that straight path, man, of difficulty, man, to receive that, man. Read it again. Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer the straight things and hope for wide. That's the point. Straight things. They're going to suffer through straight things, going through the straight things to hope for the wide of the promise, man. For they that have done wickedly have suffered the straight things, yet shall not see the wide. So they're not going to see the promise, man. Because they're going to be executed, they're going to be, they're going to have this, they're going to have to, um, judgment has to be set forth, set forth for them, man. So they're going to see, they're going to be punished, man. They're not going to see their promise. They're going to see the, they're going to see, they have to be punished on this side, man, no matter of speaking. Now, in the next kingdom, they'll be, um, reborn back, the two-thirds through the one-third. But they have to suffer punishment. The wicked have to su suffer punishment on this side regarding their judgment, man. Go to, um... Let's continue on. Let me read, um, 19 and, um... I'll finish, I'll read 19 through 21. And he said unto me, There is no judge above Yahweh, and none that have understanding above the highest. For there be many that perish in this life because they despise the law of Yahweh that is set before them. So many are going to perish. More are going to perish than more are going to, more are going to perish than be saved. Man. Twenty-one. For well, Yahweh have given straight commandments to such as Cain. When they went, let me read that again. For Yahweh have given straight commandments to such as came, what they should do to live, even as they came, and what they should observe to avoid judgment. So they, so the instructions, pretty much. Romans fifteen and four. Let me get that. Romans fifteen and four. Romans 15 and 4. For whatsoever things were written, were written for our learning. And our learning relates to these stru instruction according to the scriptures, man. That, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Patience and... So, knowing that certain things that the scriptures say, we're going to have, uh, um, have hope to believe 
that they're gonna come to pass, man. So this is the um, the instructions, the guidebook for that. Continue on. Let's go to um, Rook four and one. Rook four and one. Rook four and one. Rook four and one. This is Rook four and one. This is the book of the commandments of Yahweh and the law that endure forever. All they that keep it shall come to, to life, but such as leave it shall die. So ones who come to it, adhere to it, hearken to it, are gonna live. But ones who go contrary to that, not hearkening he to it, are gonna die. That's why these things were given, man. This is the straight commandments, man. You know what I mean? These were given, these were the instructions given to uh, the nation of Israel to keep, man. You know? Let's go to, um, go back to second address again, 722 and 25. Second address, 722 and 25. Nevertheless, they were not obedient to him, but spake against him, imagined vain things, and deceived themselves by their wicked deeds, which their evil deeds, and said of the Most High that he is not and knew not his ways. But the law have, but his law have they despised. This relates to the nation Israel is talking about. Denied his covenants and his statutes, and have and they have not been faithful. They have not performed his works, man. They had not been faithful. They committed spiritual adultery against Yahweh Bashem Yashah, worshiping idolatry, graven images, and done things, abominable things, contrary to what they're supposed to be doing, man. Go to um, 25, therefore, Ezra, for the, the empty are empty things. And for the fool are for fool things. Behold, the time shall come that these token signs which I have told thee shall come to pass, and the bride shall appear, and shall come in forth, shall be seen. The bride is what? Yahweh shall. And now is with withdrawn from the earth. Go to 30, um, thirty-six to th forty-one. Then I said, I Abraham prayed for the first of the Sodomites, for the Sodomites, and Moses for the father, and sin in the wilderness. Yahweh shy after him for Israel in the time of Achion and Samuel and David for the destruction and Solomon for them that should come to the sanctuary Helias for those that receive rain and for the dead that he might live Zacchaeus for the people in the time of uh, uh, Sinachiara and many for, for many even so now seeing corruption is growing growing up and the wickedness increased and the righteousness have and the righteous have prayed for the ungodly wherefore shall it not be so now also I'm going to go to um, Go 
42, let's continue on, 42. And he answered me and said, the present life is not the end where much glory doth for by. Therefore they prayed for the weak. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time, the day of doom, man. And that's what's to come, you know. And the beginning of immortality for to come. Where wherein corruption is past. The corruption relating to the ways of this world is gonna is gonna be past, man. But immortality is the next everlasting righteous life, man. And the day of doom is shall be the end of this time, man. The day of doom relating to um, Revelations 11 and 14, Revelations 9, uh, 9 and 12, man. And the day of doom shall be the end of the time and the beginning of immortality for to come, wherein corruption is past, and temperance is at the end, infidelity is cut off, righteousness is grown, and the truth is sprung up. So all corruption, all wickedness is going to be what it is, a memory, man. It's going to be of the past, but all relating to righteousness is going to be sprung up forth, man. Forty-five. Then shall no man be able to save him that ha that is destroyed, nor to oppress him that have gotten the victory. There's a scripture talk about, let me see. Here we go. This is um, 2nd Ezra 6 and on 28. For faith it shall flourish, corruption shall be overcome, and the truth which have been so long without fruit shall be declared. So thing, the, the righteousness and all the things that's good has been missing is going to finally is going to finally flourish and, and be um, be declared because uh, right the uh, wickedness is going to be pretty much um, um, eradicated, man, deceased, man. Let's go to. Um, Fifty-seven. In answer, he me and said, "This is the condition of the battle which man that is born upon the earth shall fight. That if he be overcome, he shall suffer as thou hast suffered. But if he get the victory, he shall receive the thing that I say." So overcome it, man. Enduring, relating to um, uh, what you have to endure to, as far as getting that everlasting truth, man. If thou endure to the end, thou shalt. Thou shalt be saved, man. Suffering the things from a spiritual aspect to gain, so ultimately gain the bigger, um, to gain the things of righteousness, man. 59. For this is the life whereof Moses spake unto the people while he lived, saying, Choose thee life that thou mayest live, man. Nevertheless, they believed not him, nor yet the prophets after him nor me which have spoken to him. So the house of Israel never believed the prophets, man. They never take heed to the prophets, man. They never take heed to what Moses said, which is a prophet, and all the prophets, Jeremiah, the Ezekiel, all the prophets, man. That try to hearken, to try to make Israel convince Israel, persuade Israel to, to convince Israel, which is to convince them to do what they're supposed to do, man. So they haven't hearkened heed to that. Read that again, 59. For this is the light where, whereof Moses spake unto the, the people, which are the Israelites, that while he lived, saying, Choose life, choose thee life, that thou mayest live. If you choose thee life by doing what, what you're supposed to do, you choose life. But if not, you're going to get death, man. Nevertheless, they believed him not, nor yet the prophets after him, nor not me, which have spoken unto them. That there should not be such heaviness in their destruction as shall as shall be joy over them 
that are persuaded to salvation, man. So the benefit of what we are trying to do, to do what you're supposed to do. Because the other option is not a good option, man. It's going to lead to your destruction, man. Let's go to um, Revelations 22 and 11. Revelations 22 and 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He, that, he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. So let them be according as they want to be, man. For example, if they want to be unrighteous, then let them be unrighteous. If they want to be righteous, let them be righteous, man. Whatever, whatever they choose to be, that's what they're going to be, man. And ultimately, a man's going is of the Lord, so how can he understand his own way? Proverbs 20, 24. So they may be fulfilling their lot, whatever it is. Whether it's to be righteous, whether it's to be wicked, whether it's to be holy, or etc. Man, so they just fulfilling their role, man. This is a big movie, and everybody's playing their part, man. And that being said, I hope it helps whoever listens. This is a few scriptures. Um, I want to give all praise to Yahweh, Bashim Yosha, Bashim Rakakadash, the water for listening. This is Brother Zayab, Miss Wolf. Hope it helps. Shalom, thanks.